Welcome back. If you're having difficulty understanding site correction issues, you're not alone. It's a very common problem. A lot of people uh, have a hard time understanding exactly what the issue is with regard to uh, making site adjustments. So let me see if I can clear up all those points for you today, maybe answer a few other questions that I sometimes see. Um, the cardinal rule is that your rear sight is always moved in the same direction that you wish your bullet impact to move. So if you wish to move your bullet impact up, you move your rear sight up. If you wish to move it to the right, you move your rear sight to the right. And conversely, you move your front sight in the opposite direction that you wish to move your bullet impact. It's not very, it's not very common that one moves their front sight, but it, it can be done in order to make a gross correction to uh, sight alignment. Uh, or in the case of, for instance, AR uh, rifles with an open sight, frequently they have the uh, front sight post that moves vertically, and that makes your initial uh, sight correction, uh, your vertical sight correction. So always rear sight is always moved in the same direction that you wish to move your bullet impact and the front sight is always moved in the opposite direction. Does that sound confusing? Well, it probably wouldn't sound confusing if you understand that when you're moving your, when you're moving your rear sight up, you're actually screwing the rear of the gun down. You're not moving your rear sight up because your sight does not go up. You can't, you can't, you can't change your sight picture in order to change a bullet impact. So you're not really moving your sight up. The sight stays in the same place between your eyeball and the target. What you're doing is when you're raising your rear sight is you're screwing the rear of the gun down. See what that's doing with the barrel? It's elevating the barrel. So as you're raising, as you're raising that front, that rear sight, you're screwing the gun down in the rear, and that's pushing your barrel upward. That's the effect that it has. So if that makes a little bit more sense to you. Now, another cardinal rule is that sight radius becomes more critical as the sight radius becomes shorter. That is that the sight radius of this of my wife's Lady Smith here with a very short sight radius. What does this one have? Uh, it's effectively a four inch, three and three quarter inch sight radius. That has a far more critical uh, relationship than this gun here. This uh, Red Hawk happens to have a sight radius of nine and a quarter inches. So this is far less critical in terms of maintaining sight alignment. And it also means that sight corrections on an adjustable sight are far more sensitive on this four inch gun than it would be on this longer barreled handgun. And just as that goes, even the longest barreled handgun is more sensitive than this longer barreled rifle where it has, this has a 16 and a half inch sight radius. So a 16 and a half inch sight radius is far less critical than that, many times less critical than that snub nose revolver. Let's see if I can uh, distill some of the mystery about, for instance, one of the most commonly asked questions is with this ladder, I took this, I took this out of the uh, Model 94. It's, it's commonly asked, how many of those uh, notches do I have to move in order to uh, effect a, a change on target? And I've seen that on many different blogs. And, and people come up with all kinds of answers, which you know, are, based, are based on just guesswork. But there's an actual way to determine how much each of those notches moves with your particular gun. So if you have, uh, if you have a 16 and a half inch sight radius that I have on this Model 94. Let's, let's start out by converting 100 yards. We want to make a sight correction from a 100 yard bench. So 100 yards is actually 3,600 inches. 36 inches to a yard times 100 is 3,600 inches. So we want to determine what the ratio is. 
So we take 16 and a half inches, which is the length of that sight radius, and remember that that means that there's 16 and a half inches stepped off every 16 and a half inches down to 100 yards. So we'll take 3,600 inches and divide that by 16.5, and that equals just a tad over 218. So roughly it's a ratio of 218 to 1. So what does that mean? Well, if I have a 10 inch correction to make, say my, my bullet is shooting low by 10 inches, I have to first of all determine how much each of those notches measures. Well, if I, and I already did this to save time here, um, I measured with my calipers the height of each of those, the height of each of those notches with with the uh, the thin aspect of the calipers. I measured the height from the base of that ladder to each of the notches and I came out with 0 .170, 148, 130, and .107 respectively. As you can see, there's no there's no clear standard there. There's not they're not they're not changing by any particular number. They're real they're rather crude and I and I suspect that this is this is rather rather a uh, non this is this is not machined to any particular uh, high standard. Um, but what I did find is measure after I measured those, then I simply took each of those numbers and I subtracted one from the other to determine if there was a, if there was some rough change between one and the other. And the changes between the highest to the next highest was 0 .022, then the next one down was 0 .018, and then 0 .023. So roughly speaking, about two hundredths of an inch thereabouts. You know, we're talking about a 30-30 here. We're throwing, we're throwing bullets down range out to 100, 150 yards on deer-sized targets. So we're not, talking, we're not talking about Olympics here. So we're talking roughly two hundredths or so of an inch per, or twenty thousandths of an inch per uh, change. That does not mean that each one of these notches uh, is twenty thousandths of an inch high. It just means that the change between one to the other is approximately uh, 20 thousandths of an inch or so. So, I know, that, I know that what the change is then. Now, in order to determine how, how much I have to, how many clicks I have, I should say notches I have to change for the 100 yards, it's simply a matter of taking that number that I derived, that 218. So I simply take the 10 inches of movement that I wish to make, I wish to come up 10 inches, 10, and then I divide that by 218, and that comes out to, you can see readily, that's about a little over four hundredths of an inch, 45, 46 thousandths of an inch. Well, I said that each of those notches is a difference of about uh, two, ten, uh, two hundredths of an inch, 20 thousandths of an inch. So if I come up two notches, I'm going to be bringing it up roughly somewhere around nine, or ten, nine maybe ten inches. So that means that each one of those notches yields, if I divide that in two, it yields a five inch change per notch, roughly speaking with this rifle with that sight radius. Now if you have a, if you have a 24 inch rifle rather than a uh, 20 inch carbine like these standard uh, Model 94 carbines are, uh, you're going to have a different cal calculation, you're going to have a different ratio. You're going to have a different ratio if you change to this this uh, four inch gun barrel with a shorter sight radius. So that's the, that's the basis upon which you can uh, determine uh, sight height correction. Sight height correction is something which, before I, before I forget to do it, I'm going to put this, uh, put this ladder back in here. Um, and Sight height correction is something which is very commonly done on rifles like this when you exhaust every, particular, every uh, possible uh, rear sight movement. So if you've, if you've gone up as high as you can or if you've gone lower, as low as you possibly can, you can't make any more corrections and you're still not at the right height on target, you can get a different front height sight. Now, 
All you need to do is, uh, you know, open up any one of the gunsmithing catalogs and go there and they have different sites and they will always tell you what the, the, the height of the site is from the base of the dovetail. So if you need to make a correction which requires uh, four hundredths of an inch and you don't have four hundred, you don't have two, you don't have two uh, stops left on your ladder, you just simply have to remember you go the other, the other direction. So you need to get a front sight which is four hundredths of an inch, forty thousandths of an inch lower than the one that you previously had on it. So that's how things work. Uh, handguns, sometimes handguns, uh, you'll, you'll have that issue when you can no longer raise the rear sight high enough. If you can't raise the, high, the rear sight high enough, uh, you can take a stroke or two with a file off the front sight and that will simply do the same thing. That'll, that'll raise your rear sight by effectively taking it off the front. So, that's all there is to it. I hope I clarified some of the confusion and uh, I'd like you to know that um, Benny is still doing remarkably well. He's, uh, he, he's just acting like a, he's acting like an eight-year-old puppy. He goes out in the snow and he, he rolls around, runs around like a stallion and he just has a great time for himself and he likes going out for his afternoon cigar. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and God bless.